Hi, I'm Deanna Springer. And I'm Dana Casey with another Fun Stitches Sisters Sewing Project and Classic Time Saving Tips by Nancy Zeman. First, we'll look at the project we're making today. We'll be making the kitchen towel topper from just two coordinating fabrics from the Afternoon Picnic Fabric Line. Showcase your kitchen style or keep this handy towel in your RV. You'll always know where your towel is hanging out. And sewing this project is super easy with just two rectangles of fabric, a purchased kitchen towel, and our easiest ever buttonhole sewing tips. To make our towel topper, we'll start by cutting some rectangles of fabric. We're cutting eight and a half by 10 inch rectangles of fabric from the outer fabric and the inner fabric. We're also cutting eight and a half by 10 and a half inch interfacing rectangles from Pellon Sure Tailor. Okay. So the next step would be to fuse. So we'll turn these over and fuse the interfacing to the back of each of the fabrics. So once these fabrics are all fused and pressed, we need to make a pattern. So from the No Hassle Kitchen Collection pattern, I've traced the kitchen towel topper pattern piece. And then you'll place them on your fused rectangles and trace. So you'll trace all the way around the top edge and then you'll cut. You'll do a little trimming and you'll cut out your pattern pieces. And the, when the, the pattern pieces are together, we'll go to the sewing machine and we'll stitch. We'll stitch all the way around with quarter inch seam allowances, doing straight side seams, and then we'll wrap the corners. This is a Nancy Zeman classic time saving tip of wrapping corners. Oh, neat. So we'll sew the both side seams, we'll wrap the fabric towards the inside of the, the project, and we'll stitch all the way across, wrapping the other opposite seam and catching it in the stitching line. Okay. So on this sample, we have sewn the side seams and then we've wrapped the corners. So just catching that quarter inch seam inside the top seam. This is a curved seam, so we need to do a little creative cutting. So with the pinking blade in my rotary cutter, I'll go to the cutting mat and I'll trim. I'll trim all the way off, leaving just a little bit beyond the stitching line. Remember when we used to use mom's pinking shears to cut paper? She loved that. <laughs> she did not like that. So you can hide them in your sewing room so you, <laughs> your children don't ruin your sewing scissors. The next step would be to press. We'll go back to the ironing board and we'll press up. Press up that lower hem, just one half of an inch, all the way around the lower towel topper. We've pressed up one half an inch. And using that guide, it'll be exactly the same all right. the way around. Right, with a Clover's Hot hammer, you get an even half inch. And then we'll do a little turning. So we'll be turning this right side out. And you know what I like to use for turning projects. The Clover's Point to Point Turner. The Clover's Point to Point Turner. And just get into those corners and get those pushed out. So it's a nice crisp edge on there. Right, you've got it. And I use this end of the point-to-point -point turner for getting in that curve pressed open from okay. the inside. So we, we do a little pressing, and we have our project ready to insert the towel. So we need to do a little towel prep before we insert the towel into our towel topper. Okay. We have a purchased towel, and, and you can be the designer here, and you can choose what length of towel you want to make. So for our sample, we use the entire length of the towel. Okay. That it, it works great if you put this on your belt, too. You can hang this on the oven door, mm -hmm. but you could put it on your belt. And uh, when you do that, you'd like a longer towel, so you bring it up, like if you were barbecuing. Okay. But you choose your length where you want and do a little stitching before you cut it. It'll help the towel keep its shape. So just choose your length. Or, like we did, we just took out the hem. We did a little reverse stitching. So if you're frugal like me, you could get two out of that. Right, you could. Just cut it down the middle in half, and then if you wanted to make two, you'd do two stitching lines, and then cut okay. between the stitches. But for our towel, we reverse stitched, and we took the hem out with a seam ripper. And on the next sample, you'll see that basting stitch, or that, that stitching line, 
right about an eighth of an inch of away for, from where I wanted to cut it. And then we get to do a little creative folding. So do you stitch this so it doesn't fray? I stitch it so it doesn't fray apart and so it keeps its shape, so it doesn't stretch out of shape. Okay. Then we're gonna do a little creative folding. And there's really no wrong way to do it. You could pleat this, you could gather it. When I was uh, sewing these in the 80s, I did a lot of gathering. <laughs> but I just put the towel topper near the top of the towel and, and that, I got that one pretty close. Okay. And then we're going to insert it into the opening. So the front of the towel is inserted into that half inch seam allowance area. And you wanna do a little pinning and take your time uh, more than I'm doing right here. Get your pleat in the middle and then do a little pinning. We're just going to catch all of that in that seam. Put a few pins in there and then we're gonna go to the sewing machine and we're gonna top stitch this. So you'll top stitch oh, near, near the fold okay. and by doing that you'll catch it both front and back and it'll be caught inside. And then we need to do some buttonhole, our easiest ever buttonhole sewing tips. So you, you'll have your pattern and you have, would have marked, this one we didn't mark, pre-mark, okay. but you would have marked your buttonhole placement right onto the outside of the towel topper and then we'll go to the sewing machine and stitch this. And once it's stitched, we do a little creative cutting. You could cut this open with a seam ripper, but the danger is you could overcut that. And go through the end. So what you want to do if you're using a seam ripper is put a pin in the project, kind of like a stop, so you don't go beyond. A few years ago when Nancy was finishing up her McCall's garment ready to ship out the door, the last step was the buttonholes. And I was helping her and I cut the buttonholes too far. Oh, no. And that was the day I knew I needed to get glasses. <laughs> it's, it's a true story. If you have a buttonhole cutter, this would be the opportunity to use your buttonhole cutter. So with a scrap piece of hardwood, you can cut buttonholes open with a buttonhole cutter. And it's like a, a sharp chisel and you just cut through the fabric and cut through all the layers and you have your buttonhole open. Far more precise. Yes, and you do, don't have a big chance of, of <laughs> over cutting the buttonhole. Cutting through. Mm -hmm. So the last step would be to sew the button into place. And then we have a finished towel topper. You'll button this on your stove handle or in your RV. On my RV. <laughs> and you'll start cooking in style. So several of our towel toppers and change up your kitchen decor in a snap or in a button. We hope you've enjoyed the Stitch It Sisters project. You'll find this pattern along with a limited number of project bundle boxes at stitchitsisters.com. Be sure to tune in again for another Stitch It Sisters sewing adventure. In the meantime, connect with Stitch It Sisters and friends on our social sites.